Hello, welcome to Advanced Composites. Today is the last day of the ongoing week, which is the third week of this course. And what we will conclude our discussion of, uh, for this entire week is by making some important observations related to A, B and D matrices, specifically which are named as extensional, mat extensional stiffness matrix, coupling stiffness matrix and bending stiffness matrix. Now, whenever we start designing these composites, in a lot of cases, we would like our response of the plate to be less complicated and in su of such a way that there is minimum shear extension coupling, a minimum amount of coupling between bending and extension and a minimum amount of coupling between bending and twisting. And if that has to happen, then we have to ensure that A16, A26, the B matrix and D16 and D26, they should be 0. If A16 and A26 is 0, then there will be no coupling between shear and extension. If the B matrix is 0, then there will be no coupling between bending response and the in plane response of the system and if D16 and D26 are 0, then there will be no coupling between the bending and twisting response of the system. And for purposes of reliable strong composites, we want these responses to be as little as possible. So, ideally a laminate in a lot of cases we would like to design such that A16, A26, the B matrix D16 and D26 all of them are. 0. So, now we will learn some tricks how to ensure this thing is accomplished. So, for ensuring A16 is equal to A26 is equal to 0, we can do several things. Option 1, we use all layers should be unidirectional. In 0 degree, okay. if all the layers are unidirectional and are in 0 degree direction, what happens? Then for each layer q 1 6 bar is equal to q 2 6 bar is equal to 0 and as a consequence a 1 6 and a 2 6 are 0 this is one option. The second option is we have a cross ply laminate So, in a cross ply laminate each layer is either 0 degrees or 90 degrees in orientation And if that is the case, then once again for each layer q 1 6 bar equals q 2 6 bar equals 0 and as a consequence a 1 6 is equal to a 2 6 is equal to 0. The third option is we use an angle ply laminate and which is a more realistic option and we will discuss this. What is the condition for having an angle ply laminate? That for every layer with theta orientation, we have another layer with minus theta orientation ok. In this case what happens is that let us say there is a layer which has theta orientation and because of that it has a value of q 1 6 which is this q 
1.16 bar and let us say its thickness is T and it is having theta orientation let us say we call it T theta. Then there is another layer which has negative theta orientation and last week we had discussed that Q16 bar is an odd function of theta. So, the contribution from this negative theta layer will be minus Q16 bar and T minus theta and because the thicknesses are same these contributions add to 0 and as a consequence A16 and A26 for angle ply laminates it they become they are 0. So, we can design laminates in such a way that the overall value of A16 and A26 for such laminate becomes 0 either by having unidirectional laminates which is not a realistic proposition or by having cross ply laminates which is again not so much of a realistic thing, but we can also use angle ply laminates which are uh, practical uh, approaches to ensure that there is no coupling between shear and extension. The next thing we discuss is to ensure that the B matrix is 0, the B matrix is 0 and to ensure that what we have to make sure is that the laminate is symmetric. If the laminate is symmetric then all values in the B matrix they will come out to be 0. Why does this happen? So, consider a laminate and let us say it has a large number of layers hmm? and a symmetric laminate is such that whatever is the sequence of layers above the mid plane the same sequence is reflected below the mid plane. Okay. So, suppose there is a layer here and there is a layer here both these layers are equidistant from each other because the laminate is symmetric and the orientation is also same. Okay. So, because and this is the mid plane where z is equal to 0. So, so how, how do I show that the laminate which is symmetric in nature its B is going to be 0. So, suppose this th uh, coordinate is h i or let us say h k and this coordinate is h no h k minus 1 and this is h k okay. and because it is symmetrically uh, located the value of this coordinate will be minus h k minus 1 and the value of this will be minus h k these are the coordinates. Hmm? Yeah, this is not a minus this is just a line. Okay. So, we know that B i j is what is the sum of Q i j times h k square minus h k minus 1 square and we sum it up from k is equal to 1 to n and that multiplied by half. So, contribution from let us call this layer L 1 and let us call this layer N L 2. So, contribution from L 1 will be Q i j bar for the kth layer hmm, times h k square minus h k minus 1 square into 1 by 2 and contribution from layer L 2 is the same orientation same material everything. So, q i j will be same. So, it is same q i j q i j k and times. So, of course, there is a half factor 
but the thing in the parenthesis will be minus h k minus 1 whole square. So, it will be h k minus 1 square minus h k square. So, what you see is that this is negative of this and they all cancel out and because they cancel the B matrix eventually turns out to be 0, because there is a layer which cancel out the effect of another layer which is equidistantly placed away from the mid plane on the other side. So, this is the way we can have the B matrix as 0. And then the last one is a little tricky. So, we want d 1 6 and d 2 6 to be 0. Okay. Now, we can do it again in several ways. So, one is we have unidirectional lamina so if I have a unidirectional laminate and everything is 0 and theta is 0 then that will ensure that d 1 6 and d 2 6 will be 0 because for a 0 degree direction laminate d 1 6 and d 2 6 q 1 6 q 2 6 are 0. The other one is cross ply laminate. So, this again in this case also d 1 6 and d 2 6 will be identically 0, but again these two lamination sequences are not practical because they create other problems when we actually use such laminates. So, these two are in this case d 1 6 and d 2 6 are exactly 0, but then what do we do to make sure uh, what is the other option. So, the other option is that for every ply with orientation of theta, we put another ply of orientation orientation of theta which uh, minus theta. So, this is minus theta which is placed on the other side of mid plane at same distance ok at same distance. So, what does that mean? So, what it means is that suppose I have a laminate this is the mid plane and this is a ply of orientation theta and let us say this distance is d, then I put another ply away from the mid plane on the other side distance is still d and its orientation should be minus theta. If that is the case then the contribution from layer L 1 and contribution of layer L 2 it will exactly cancel out. Okay. So, it will cancel out. So, in such a case a 1 6, a 2 6, d 1 6 and d 2 6 all will be 0 and that is good, but then this creates a problem because, because of this situation the laminate is not symmetric and thus the B matrix is not 0. So, we are able to solve the problem of uh, uh, problem associated with a 1 6, a 2 6, d 1 6, d 2 6, but we have introduced the problem of B and the problem of B is much more important than the problem of d 1 6 and d 2 6. So, we do not like this solution. So, what we do is we go for some approximate solutions where d 1 6 and d 2 6 are not exactly 0 
but they are fairly small. So, what do we do in such a cases? In such a cases, so approximate solutions. So, in such a case, what we do is we combine plus theta and minus theta layers next to each other next to each other. So, example example would be so we can have this could be a lamination sequence 45 45 0 90 this is the mid plane and then 90 0 45 and 45 okay here these two are 45 and 45 degrees and they generate large d16 large d16 but if we want to reduce d16 what do we do we have another configuration 45 minus 45 because it says combine theta and minus theta layers next to each other so i have put them next to each other 0 90 this is the mid plane 90 0 minus 45 and 45 and then you see if you calculate the contribution from these two guys 45 and minus 45 you will find that it is small d 1 6 small d 1 6. So, let us very quickly show this and then we close the discussion. So, we will call this case 1 and we will call this case 2. So, let us have so this is the mid plane and let us say this is theta theta 0 and 90 hmm? and let us give these some coordinates. So, this is minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and 0. Okay. So, these top two layers have theta configuration and their total contribution. If you calculate, uh, it comes out to be q 1 6 bar by 3 into minus 2 cube minus minus 4 cube and that works out to be q 1 6 bar by 3 into 54 oh actually 56 56 okay and then we have the other configuration So, this is my mid plane hmm. So, this is theta and I have putting minus theta here 0 and 90 and this is minus 4 these are the coordinates minus 3 minus 2 and minus 1 and if we calculate the contributions of these two guys we will find that the contribution to d 1 6 is q 1 6 bar by 3 into minus 18 ok. So, if you take the absolute magnitude here it is 56 by 3 and here it is 18 by 3 if you take the absolute magnitude d 1 6 goes down by roughly 68 percent. So, in this way and if the laminate is symmetric b will still be 0 because there is a theta and there is negative theta a 1 6 a 2 6 are 0 and d 1 6 and d 2 6 get minimized. So, in this way 
we are able to address this problem in an approximate way so that it becomes manageable. So, this concludes our discussion for today and starting next week we will open a new chapter in this course and that will be related to failure of composites. So, that is what we plan to start from the next week until then have a great weekend. Thank you.